Are zip files safe to open? Type one Leo Notenboom for askleo.com. The answer, of course, is it depends. Um, zip files are used a lot by spammers and fishers to basically fool you into doing things. And yet, zip files are a, an incredibly convenient way to transfer files in various situations. So what is a zip file? A zip file has two primary characteristics. It is a file format that allows you to combine several files into a single file. So you might have a bunch of different files for, I don't know, a project of some sort. And you might take a zip program, 7-zip is the one I like to use, and use that to create a zip file that contains all of those files. And that way you can share your zip file, your entire project as a single file, instead of having to deal with all those individual files. This is one of the reasons that zip files are often called archives because they are collections of files. Now, the other thing that zip does is it compresses everything that you put into your archive. What that means is that that project may take up X amount of space on your disk, but depending on the specifics of the files involved, it could total up to something significantly less than that same amount. So zip files are also a great way to save space. Again, depending on what kinds of files you're zipping. If the file format is already compressed, which now includes JPEGs, MP4s, and even docx and excelx files then you're not going to get a whole lot of compression but if you've got other kinds of files like plain text documents and who knows what else then yes those often can compress down to something significantly smaller than the original zip files are everywhere this is one of the really neat things about them it doesn't matter what operating system you're on windows understands zip files mac has zip command line tools. Linux has zip command line tools. It's ubiquitous, which makes it a really great way to share things with folks who may be on a different platform than you are. Zip is an interesting way of what I would call obfuscation. If you've got a zip file, foo.zip, that tells you nothing about what's inside you actually have to look inside the zip file to understand what there is. For example, many systems will not allow you to send a .exe file as an attachment. That's because .exe files are programs that, when opened, run. If that's malware, <laughs> That's a problem. You've just run malware on your machine. So one of the ways that email programs try to keep us safer is by disallowing .exe files from being freely shared that way. However, and this is why I say spammers and scammers love zip files, is that all they really need to do is take that executable, that malware, put it in a zip file, and email it. I mean, email programs have to allow zip files because zip files are so useful for legitimate things. So a scammer says, hey, here's a zip file. Um, here's this totally fake pretense that would get you to download the zip file, unzip it, and then run what's inside. Well, guess what? You've got malware. Anti-malware scanners are actually aware of this technique, and many of them will scan not just the zip file, but they will actually scan the contents of the zip file. In a sense, they're unzipping the contents in order to scan the contents for malware. That's great. That saves you from a lot. However, scammers and spammers are aware of this as well. And one of the things you can do with a zip file is password protect it. By password protecting it, you're also encrypting the contents so the contents cannot be viewed without the password. 
The anti-malware tools, of course, don't have the password. So now all the scammers need to do is to send you a zip file that requires a password and then somehow convince you to unzip the file using the password, run the program inside, and boom, you've got malware. Like I said, it's pretty common that scammers will do this kind of thing. Since so much malware is currently being delivered as email attachments, the scenario that I just outlined where an, a scammer creates an encrypted zip file and somehow convinces you to open it, maybe by posing as your bank, maybe by posing as a shipping company, maybe by posing as anti-malware software that is about to bill you. The bottom line is they're trying to get you to open that zip file, providing the password that they probably included in the message, and then run the malware inside. So when can you trust a zip file? Well, it's pretty much like any attachment. You can trust the zip files you're attaching and that you know are from people you trust. If you didn't ask for it, if you didn't expect it, if you have no idea what it's all about, it's probably not safe. And I would err on the side of caution and not come anywhere close to opening up that zip file. Begin with the big companies, you know, the, the Microsofts, the anti-malware tools, the shipping companies, the banks, they don't send zip files, <laughs> period. They just don't. However, if you're concerned, if you get a message that says, hey, we're about to delete your account, open the file below and here's the password, calm down, take a moment, and instead of opening that zip file, take a look at the company that it's supposedly from and contact that company directly through means you already know. The bookmark to their website or the phone number you already have or whatever. Don't use any information in the email because there's a good chance that it might be fake. These companies would much rather have you contact them and asking them if this is safe, if they intended to send this, than they would want you to be faked by something that only looked like it came from them. So zip files are useful, but they're useful to scammers as well. And that's why I say it depends. And it's important that you and I be careful when we open zip files from any source. For updates, for comments, for links related to this topic and more, visit askleo.com slash 16017. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.